Microutilities Introduction The microutility model is a well-established social impact model for rural electrification in India and Bangladesh, though new from a South African point of view. Through the use of renewable energies and a novel battery distribution system, a micro-off-grid generation business can be established to cater for the electricity needs of a community in an otherwise inaccessible area. So what is microutilities? A micro-utility is a small or micro for-profit business operating close or inside a rural community to provide the same services as a standard utility provider, for example ESCOM. Unlike standard utilities, micro-utilities rely on renewable energies to generate electricity sold to their customers. In this regard, micro-utilities are very similar to many proposed off-grid providers. They don't need access to the national grid, nor do they need large-scale generation capacity located far from the site of consumption. What differentiates micro-utilities from other off-grid providers is its customer focus and the capacity scale at which it trades. Micro-utilities predominantly operates in less privileged communities, typically in rural areas, and sells electricity on a small scale. Standard utility providers have trouble servicing these communities for various reasons. Firstly, these communities are typically far from a national grid, and it's expensive to connect them. Secondly, these households in these areas are scattered far apart and sometimes over difficult terrain. These communities are also poor, which makes it difficult to finance the infrastructure required to connect them to the grid. Fourthly, cable theft is a massive problem in South Africa. All these reasons make standard cable transmission infrastructure impractical. However, this is where micro-utilities are unique. Micro-utilities rely on a battery-based distribution system. Instead of electrical cables connecting households to the grid, they are powered by battery packs. A good analogy is that of a water well. Micro-utility serves as the source of electricity, the well, which the local communities visit with battery packs, buckets, for recharging. These battery packs are taken home, where they can power small electrical appliances like lamps, radios, small TVs, etc. The fact that there is no transmission infrastructure required cuts down on cost and setup time. In addition, battery packs can be carried where they are needed, which means the inaccessible terrain associated with rural communities is negated. With a cheap renewable energy generator and simple distribution network, micro-utilities can provide power to rural households without them needing to own a renewable system of their own. So why is rural electrification so important? Rural electrification is important for social upliftment and economic development. Electricity brings lice and increased study hours for children, and longer trading hours for business. It allows for better living standards, both for entertainment and education. Electricity is also vital for proper health care. It allows remote clinics to store medicine and vaccines and operate closer to the need. Even the UN agrees that electricity is vital for achieving the Millennium Goals. People are leaving the villages and moving to the big city, hoping to find a better life. The problem with that is, once they arrive in the cities, they realize that finding a job is not that easy, and they are forced to live in the slums. When people are put in this bad situation, crime becomes a method of survival. It's a pressure cooker, and the influx of rural migrants is aggravating the situation. Cities cannot solve the situation. Rural areas need to be uplifted to inspire people to stay there and to inspire others to return back home. So what is wrong with the past utility providers? For this I need to tell you a story. A group of young Canadian engineers from Engineers Without Borders set out on an expedition to Southern Africa to bring running water to as many rural villages as, as they could. And for a while they succeeded. Until they went home. A few years later, they went back to see how their taps and pipes were holding up. Shockingly, they found that only a fraction of the systems were still working, so they set out to repair it. While working on the pipes, they discovered another set of water pipes. Puzzled, they asked the locals, whose pipes are these? To which the locals replied, ach no, those are the Americans, and their pipes are broken too. Shocked the engineers asked, so why didn't you fix it? To which the locals honestly replied, but they're your pipes. You fix them. The second story is about rural electrification in South Africa. In 2004, researchers from the CSIR went to a village in the Eastern Cape to see if renewable energy could provide their electricity needs. The rural village in the area had no electricity and were too far removed from a national grid to warrant a direct connection, 
so an off-grid solution was implemented. Unfortunately, the electrification project encountered similar problems to the Canadians. Firstly, there was only enough electricity to cater for one of the villages, which led to disgruntled neighbors. Their argument was valid. Why could this village get free electricity and not us? Secondly, since electricity was provided for free, there was no incentive to use the electricity conservatively. Villages started bypassing trip switches in order to run bigger applications like fridges and stoves, which the system was not designed for. It led to all sorts of technical problems. Thirdly, there was no sense of ownership. It was expected that the CSIR would maintain the system for the foreseeable future. In 2007, it was decided to scrap the project. These stories remind us of a simple truth. Don't give a fish. Teach how to fish. Skills transfer and community involvement is critical for lasting social impact. And from this basic truth came the concept of social business. How do micro-utilities bring lasting social impact? Micro utilities build on the social business model. Social business is a unification of business and charity, focusing on skills transfer, job creation, and community involvement to bring lasting social product. The social business concept was laid out by Professor Mohamed Yanis in Bangladesh, which earned him the 2006 Nobel Peace Prize. By starting for profit businesses and communities aimed at solving real world problems, hunger, poverty, unemployment, a sustainable solution can be found. In fact, rural electrification initiatives in Bangladesh, like Garmin Sakti, have proven micro-utilities to be a very effective mechanism with which to combat the problem of rural electrification. Today, Garmin Sakti is one of the largest micro-generating companies in the world. The number of installed renewable energy systems in Bangladesh jumped from 228 in 1997 to a total of half a million by 2010. So how does renewable energy come into play? So Africa is already exploiting the versatile nature of solar PV to provide cheap renewable energy. A good example is KwaZulu Energy Services, or KESH, and NURA. Both are working hard to provide electricity to tens of thousands of South Africans. The focus is on solar home systems, or SHS, to provide the electricity for those in need without relying on a grid connection. A grid connection can cost between 10 and 15,000 rand, while a home solar system only costs 4,000. Unfortunately, installing and managing solar home systems at every rural home has led to many problems. Firstly, these solar home systems are widely spread in difficult terrain, making maintenance very difficult. A technician can typically only service four to five systems in a day. Secondly, it takes a long time for a faulty system to get reported to a technician, which can leave a household in the dark for days. Nura has reported that 70% of non-payment from the monthly service fees were due to lack of maintenance. Why pay for a system if it's not working? Thirdly, the owner of the home system are not trained and do not have the technical capability to effectively diagnose problems. This leads to inaccurate reports and wasted effort on the, on the part of technicians. Fourthly, these systems are vulnerable to theft. Rural households do not have the funds or the manpower to protect these systems adequately. Though it must be said, even with these challenges, the solar home system have brought electricity to thousands of rural households. So how can micro-utilities improve on the solar home system? Micro-utility model simplifies the maintenance problems experienced in the past. First, by installing renewable energy systems at one location, maintenance is streamlined and less downtime is experienced. Second, micro-utility owners can be educated to maintain the renewable energy systems better. This means that technicians only need to be deployed for serious problems. In addition, Due to the better training, the micro-utility can report problems more accurately, which leads to better service. Thirdly, the location of the micro-utility is usually less isolated than some of the rural households it wishes to service. It is likely that there will be a road leading to the micro-utility, making access much easier. Fourthly, micro-utilities are better equipped compared to the home systems, and with this comes a better ability to protect the system. This is vital in a crime-ridden country like South Africa. Fifthly, unlike home systems, micro-utilities can consider other renewable energy technologies as well. For example, wind, hydro, biogas, all these technologies 
can be brought in to allow a more diversified source of electricity and energy and to allow for a greater set of skills transfer. In short, micro utilities have all the benefits of home systems with a much simpler deployment and maintenance scheme. Instead of installing renewable energy systems at every home, a business is started to encapsulate the renewable energy system. The challenge is to incubate these businesses. So how do you start a micro utility business in a community? Rural electrification initiatives like Armin Sati uses micro franchising to incubate micro utility businesses. The process works as follows. To start, the renewable energy potential of the area is assessed to assemble a portfolio of applicable renewable energy technologies. Then a system is designed. Next, the community is scouted for potential micro utility candidates. They are assessed based on their creditworthiness and their temperament. These candidates are then approached and the business opportunity is explained. If they decide to start the micro utility franchise, the hosting company will install the system and provide the necessary training. During the incubation period, the new micro utility typically makes reduced payments on the system in order to give the business a chance to get on its feet. Once the sale of electricity is flowing and the system is understood, these businesses can function largely independent from the hosting company. Because the income is generated from the sale of electricity, monthly installments for the system is secured as well. So how can micro-utilities be linked to schools? Coupling micro-utilities to schools is not a new thing and has been done in India before. The reason behind this is that schools make a natural distribution point for the batteries. Children are issued small battery packs which they bring to the schools in the mornings. Once there, the battery packs are dropped off with the micro-utility where they are plugged into solar or wind or whatever to charge the batteries during the day while the kids are having their classes. At the end of the day, the kids collect their charged batteries and take it back home. At home, these battery packs provide a versatile source of electricity which the children can use to power their reading lamps, charge their phones, power their computers, whatever is needed. The micro-utility at the school is owned by a group of local women, typically mothers. This creates an income for the mothers and provides the lights for the community. Traditionally, social business and micro utilities by extension focus on women empowerment. The idea is that women are more community oriented compared to men. In addition, research has shown that enabling women with skills and employment has led to less domestic violence. It's also experienced that women pay their systems more promptly than men, making them more credit worthy. So what do her micro utilities hope to achieve? By using the micro-utility electrification model, a tangible difference can be made in South Africa right away. As the famous Arkham Razor states, a simple solution is usually the best solution. With the focus being on rural communities, it's imperative that the concept be executable with minimal external interference. The focus must remain on helping people help themselves. This is not a charity. At the end, these community businesses will be self-sustained giving the power back to the people.